Hey, everyone. Hey, you know, uh, several years ago, uh, I found myself getting angry all the time. And I, you know, I never thought of myself as being an angry person in any way. I'm kind of a peace loving guy. And, uh, but then I started reacting to people, you know, things that people said, my, my wife or, you know, other people around me, I started reacting and, and all of a sudden I realized, you know what, I'm, ha I have a problem with anger. And so I began to say, you know, I've got to learn what do I do with this anger? Maybe you found yourself in that same situation. Maybe anger is an issue for you. Maybe little things make you mad. Well, I just want to share some of the things that I learned from the Word of God about anger that will help you as well. <clears throat> so let me give you a beginning scripture, and then we're going to jump right into this. In James chapter 1, verse 19 and 20, it says this, but this you know, my beloved brethren, uh, but everyone must be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger, for the anger of man does not achieve the righteousness of God. So let's pray, ask the Holy Spirit to speak to us. God, I thank you that you have answers to every issue in our life. And Lord, as I talk about anger, Holy Spirit, we invite you to give, speak to us. And I pray that you'll impart the grace that we need to be able to overcome if our anger is out of control. I pray you'll give, help us today to understand what to do and how to remedy this issue in our life and put on love and put off the old man and put on the new man in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hey, make sure you go to my YouTube channel, which is Fred Kropp, K-R-O-P-P, -P, and uh, you'll find lots of messages there. But all right, so let's just jump into this. You know, one of the greatest hindrances, and you can see that in America today, we're having major anger issues leading to, uh, you know, assassination attempts and things like that. But one of the greatest deterrence in building healthy relationships is anger <clears throat> because you know what anger will make you say things you really didn't want to say it'll make you do things you really didn't want to do it makes you do things that you'll regret the rest of your life you ever done that where you said something to someone that you love and you said it out of anger and and the problem with that is that those words go into them and affects them and then you regret that you ever said that and the fact is that anger, there's a thing called a spirit of anger, and that anger wants to control you. You can read about it in Genesis chapter 4 with the story of Cain and Abel, where God said to, you know, come and bring an offering. And it, the Bible says God accepted Abel's offering, but he didn't accept Cain's offering. And it says this, that Cain became very angry. And God talked to him. And he said, why are you so angry? Uh, and he says, listen, uh, if you do the right thing, don't worry, you, you'll be okay. He says, but watch out with your anger because sin is crouching at the door and it's eager to control you. You see, anger wants to control you. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26 and 27, it says, be angry and do not sin. You know, uncontrolled anger leads to acts of violence. We can see that right now, all the abuse that's happening a child abuse, uh, you know, sexual abuse, all kinds of things that are happening. A lot of it is a result of just bursts of anger where people have lost control of their own ability to control their anger. You see, anger just doesn't only hurt others, but it hurts you. In the long run, you're always going to reap the consequences of your anger. So where does anger come from? Well, I've found that anger has several sources. One could be it comes from a pain or a hurt that we've experienced in the past. We haven't been healed of that hurt, and so we're still real sensitive, and we kind of go off, right, when, 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 when something reminds us or, or reignites that hurt or pain in our life. Uh, it, another source of anger is the desire to control people. Uh, there are people... Uh, you know, some you can get to that place where uh, in your life where the way you keep, you know, yourself together is by controlling everybody else. And so if you, you know, one of the ways you can manipulate control is through anger. Uh, anger also comes from a low tolerance 
level toward other people. In other words, you, we let people get under our skin. People bug us. We don't. We just don't have a high tolerance for people that don't do what we want them to do, right? Well, Proverbs 16, verse 32 says this, He who is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. So God wants us to be able to control our anger. But the fact is, we have to work on it. Another thing that anger comes from is hatred toward ourselves. I've seen this. This is probably one of the most common sources of anger is that we really hate ourselves. I remember one of the verses that really helped me was in Ephesians chapter 5, where it says husbands, it says verse 28, it says husbands should love their wives as their own bodies for he who loves his wife loves himself. That was a revelation to me. All of a sudden I realized if I don't love my wife Pam the way she needs to be loved, it's because I don't love myself. And so I had to realize I'm actually reacting out of self-hatred. Uh, in Matthew 22 verse 39 it says this, and the second is like it, you shall love your neighbor, the second greatest commandment, as yourself. So hey, if you don't love yourself, you're going to have a hard time loving other people. Here's another one which we can see in children, right? If you have kids, you know this one real well. Anger comes from not getting our own way or getting what we want, right? I watch it. I have grandchildren. I have young grandchildren, and you can just see it. They get angry. My, one of my grandsons, he just gets angry because he didn't get his own way or get what he wanted. Uh, another thing that causes anger is we believe we're being treated unfairly. Have you ever said that? Have you ever said the words, that's not fair, right? You know, somebody gets something you, you, you know, that you wanted to get and you're angry about it because you're like, well, that's not fair. Or you might be angry at God. God, that's not fair. Or another thing that causes anger is when you dwell on something that caused you pain or embarrassment. See, anger also happens when somebody touches something in their life, a hurt or a wound or a pain or offense that happened to us in the, past, in the past. We respond with anger. So the Bible says, be angry, but do not sin. So now anger is not, not wrong. In other words, there is a righteous anger. The Ephesians I just quoted you in, in Ephesians 4, 26, 27, be angry, but do not sin. So the Bible actually indicates that God gets angry, right? God, I don't know if he gets angry. I, th I think that he can have an anger response. And so uh, anger, another thing that anger is, it's a unforgiveness toward other people. People have offended you. They hurt you. And your only response that you know how to do is that you want to get back at them, right? You want to pay them back. And so you get angry at them. Now, the problem with anger is that if you don't deal with it, it becomes destructive uh, when we allow it to escalate and go to higher levels and we don't resolve it. Uh, the Bible says this in Ecclesiastes 7, 9. It says, don't hasten in your spirit to be anger, for anger rests in the bosom of fools. Anger rests in the bosom of fools. Uh, in Psalm 37, 8, it says, Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It only causes harm. And so we can see, you probably know things there. You, maybe you had things happen around your life where, you know, all of a sudden the anger went to a level that it now is causing great harm. It could be a physical thing. It could be harming people emotionally or whatever. But all of a sudden you go off the rails. Now I see that there is three stages of anger. Uh, here again, it says in Ephesians 4, 26 and 27, it says, Be angry, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place, listen to this, nor give place to the devil. When you let your anger get out of control, it actually opens you up to a, what I would say is an evil spirit of anger. Now, I see three stages of anger. First stage is stage one is righteous anger or normal anger. So it's not wrong to get angry. It's just what happens and what you do with that anger. Stage two is what I would call sinful anger, anger that causes sin. In other words, you don't deal with it. And so now you're using anger to hurt your other people. You're using anger to manipulate. It goes into a sin realm. And then the 
the deepest level of anger is what I would call demonic anger. Where now, because you got out of control in your anger, you didn't deal with it, you have unresolved bitterness in your life, and then what happens is you open the door to a demon coming and beginning to manifest itself in and through your life. So now I come to the question, how do I deal with my anger? Well, here's some things that I found helpful for me that I think will be helpful to you. Number one, here it is. Ask yourself the question, why am I angry? That really is right away. As soon as you do that, uh, you know, God said to Cain in Genesis chapter 4, he was trying, God was trying to help Cain from not taking his anger to another level where he ends up killing his brother Abel. So God says to him, why are you angry, Cain? Why are you angry? So what I found is that most of the time that resolves my anger. I ask myself the question, why am I angry? Well, maybe it's not, I'm not getting my own way, or they said something I don't like, or, 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 or I'm not feeling good. You know, if you could just like, I don't feel good today, and, I, and I, I, because I haven't prayed for the peace of God in my life, I, I, I can go out, you know, go out, get out of control and, and respond just because I'm not feeling good. I have a headache, right? Have you ever done that? And you get angry. So number one, ask yourself the question, why am I angry? Sometimes the answer of that will right away say, okay, get yourself together, Fred. Uh, you don't need to be angry in this situation. Number two, forgive the one who made you angry. The Bible says this in Colossians chapter 3, verse 13. It says that we are to bear with one another and forgive one another if we have a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, you also must do. And so once you establish a lifestyle of forgiveness, in other words, you've been forgiven a great debt, and so you walk in forgiveness. The Bible says, he who covers a matter seeks love. Uh, and so, you, you, you know, it's so easy with the internet today and all the different media that we have that we can now express our anger freely and we don't operate in forgiveness. We need to understand forgiveness is for us. It's to, it's to help us. It's not for them. Everybody may not respond to your forgiving them, but one thing will happen is that it'll bring you into the peace of God. So number one, ask yourself the question, why am I angry? Number two, forgive the people or what, you know, that made you angry. And number three, put off the old man and put on the new man. What's that? Well, the Bible says that when you're in Christ, you're a brand new creation. You have a new man. Now, your old man is corrupt, the Bible says. It says this in Colossians chapter 3, verses 8 through 10. But now you yourselves put off all of these. Now, listen, here's some, here is some... Um, aspects or some characteristics of the old man, that, the person you were before Christ. But now you yourselves put off all these anger, wrath, malice, bra blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man who is renewed in a knowledge according to the image of him who created him. If you go into my, onto my YouTube channel, I do a series on identity and in there I talk about how to put on the new man. So he goes on to say, put on the new man who's renewed in a true knowledge according to the image of Christ who created him. So we can actually by faith, we can put off the old person that we are, put off anger, put off wrath, and we can put on the new man. And again, the Bible says this in Romans 13, 14, it says, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. One of the things that anger is, it's a manifestation of the flesh. It's not always a demon. It's, it's just that your flesh, and you can't you know, I can't cast the flesh out of you. You're always going to have the flesh until the day you go be with Jesus and get a new body. But one of the aspects of your flesh is all the negative emotions and negative reactions and lust and hate and anger and bitterness and jealousy are all manifestations of the flesh. So the Bible says, put on Jesus and make no provision for the flesh. And then the Bible says this in Galatians 3.27. It says, as many of you as were baptized, and I encourage you, if you have not been water baptized, get water baptized since you believed in Jesus. It says, as many of you have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. Then number four, the fourth thing is, if you discover that I'm just completely out of control, if you've entered into the demonic level of anger, you probably need to get with somebody that to pray with you and so that and to renounce lead you in renouncing the spirit of anger 
uh, and or any other spirits attached to it. Bitterness, unforgiveness, resentment, those kind of things. Now, I want to end this by praying for you. Maybe you found you're at that place right now where like, man, I think I need deliverance. Maybe you need to forgive. Maybe, where are you at in this? But I want to pray for you right now. Father, I pray for everyone watching this video in the name of Jesus. And I pray and we choose to renounce the spirit of anger, bitterness, resentment, unforgiveness. We renounce them in the name of Jesus. We choose to put off the old man and put on the new man that looks like Jesus and talks like Jesus and acts like Jesus. And God, we forgive anyone that has offended us. And we ask you for the grace to control our anger and Lord, to say no to the anger and say yes to love, mercy, and grace. I pray that in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, I hope that was helpful to you. Hey, again, this is Fred Kropp coming from the Healing Rooms here in Santa Maria, California. And by the way, one more thing I want to share with you, and that is that I wrote a book called One Simple Act of Obedience. You can find it on Amazon. This book will help you to be bold as a Christian uh, wherever you are, and wherever you live, wherever you work, you're going to find yourself demonstrating the kingdom of God. Again, you can find it on Amazon, One Simple Act of Obedience. All right, I want you to know that I love you, Jesus loves you, and the Father loves you. Be blessed, my brothers and sisters.